We didn't make Pikmin 3 simply to extend the series. We made it because we wanted to. We felt that the new hardware, Wii U, was really perfect for Pikmin. Once we started making it, we could see each of the individual Pikmin moving like ants on Wii U. And the Pikmin were moving all over the map, doing their own tasks, thanks to the enhanced AI. And the controls are much simpler with the use of Wii Motion Plus. You can use the gamepad to view the overall map at any time, and you can also play only on the Wii U gamepad. These improvements in particular are perfect for thinking of strategy while the Pikmin are performing their individual actions. Now that we've built the game, I'm finally spending a lot of time playing it, and I'm really happy we made it. It may sound like I'm exaggerating, but it feels like Wii U was made for Pikmin. It's a bold statement, but that's how satisfied I am with the game. In the first game, I was a bit stubborn. I wanted to tell a story where the rocket would fly away at the end of the final day. But if you failed to complete the rocket, it would crash. This time, I felt it would be fine for you to take all the time you want. There is a maximum daytime limit, but you can take as many days as you like. You can take your time and still clear the game. We made it so from there on, you can invent your own play style as you try to shorten your completion time. There are many things that we game developers and that those who design the bosses in particular always wrestle with. The one in particular is the fact that if you damage something in the real world, that damage always remains. The Pikmin take damage but keep on fighting the next day, so it's also the same with the bosses. The damage they take keeps piling up, so you can fight until it's almost sunset, and then if you think you might be able to finish it off, you, you don't have to go too far. You can step away and decide to finish it off in the morning. Then you go in, you beat it first thing, and decide what to do with the rest of your day. You can play at a pace that's similar to real life, so it doesn't feel like a stage in a game. It feels like we're onto something new. How you use your time, and in particular how you use the map on the gamepad, is extremely important in this game, as it makes it much easier to spend your time effectively by having the Pikmin perform a variety of different tasks at the same time. There are three main characters this time, and you can place each of them in various places on the map and have them oversee the work. Once a task is finished, you can move on to the next thing, so the amount of work you can do over the course of a day has increased greatly. Once you discover this, the game becomes very interesting. In this game, there are three main modes, and naturally one is the story mode. I've been explaining story mode so far. Beyond that, there are the bingo battle mode and the mission mode. Mission mode is basically similar in style to the story mode, but it asks you if you can beat this boss, or collect the fruit, or to see how efficiently you can progress through a level within a given time limit. You can experience the fundamentals of a Pikmin game in a short time, about 7 to 10 minutes. As you keep playing these levels within the given time frame, you become better at planning things out, which then will increase your score. It's very satisfying. If you play this, I think your technique in story mode will greatly improve. So I think it will be more fun to go back and try playing the story mode again after you've played mission mode. And there's also the bingo battle mode. In this mode, you basically battle against somebody else. There's a bingo card, and whoever gets a bingo first wins. So there are a lot of potential strategies involved. You can get in the other player's way, or go for the items you need to win, or you can try and get the item they need to block their bingo. Games like this can really set apart the expert from the novice. So, we added a roulette wheel. Because you can get a variety of items, you can turn the tides of battle. And by playing this mode, you can also get a sense of what Pikmin is all about. And since you can even play this with beginners, I hope everyone will enjoy it. 
Because so much thought has gone into the Wii Remote since the early days of the Wii hardware, I think the basic Wii Remote nunchuck controls are the most comfortable way to play. Having said that, you'll be looking at and touching the gamepad screen a lot, so we made it so that you can also play with the gamepad, similar to the controls from the Nintendo GameCube version. So I think you should choose how you'll play depending on what style you want to play at that time or the occasion. There's the refined GameCube controls and the Wii Remote and Nunchuck controls. You can also play with the Wii U Pro Controller. And we've also made it compatible with playing only on the Wii U gamepad with the TV turned off. As I talk about this game, aren't you feeling that it may seem like it might be a difficult game? I like absorbing myself in a game, and when I do, I tend to talk about it passionately. But the game's difficulty has been on my mind. So we tested it recently with some grade school kids. We found it's the kind of game that the more you play at your own pace, the more you start to understand it. So I think it will be played by a wide variety of people. Also, during my personal time the other day, I took a group of neighborhood kids out for a recreational activity. I was doodling and drew a Pikmin. One of the girls caught me and asked, why are you drawing a Pikmin? And I asked if she knew Pikmin, and the girl said, yes. And then a slightly older boy came by and said, hey, that's a, that's a Pikmin. The girl went on to say, you know, mister, there's a bad guy in the game called a Bulborb. I thanked her for the information. Knowing that kids like them knew about Pikmin really relieved me. And knowing that it's the kind of game that kids like them can play too reassured me that I could recommend the game to anyone. For those of you who've never played Pikmin, You'll have fun as you try it out, so please try playing. Once you do, I bet you'll think it feels unlike anything you've ever experienced before. You call the Pikmin with a whistle and throw them here and there, telling them where to go, and you repeat. Eventually, you'll get what kind of game it is. And for the experts out there, I can say that this game feels like the ultimate evolution of the original Pikmin. I hope with this new game, it can build the framework of what would be a new kind of real-time simulation game. Please give it all you've got.